See, I've got another tip for you. You know, this might be the most important tip you've ever heard of, especially if you're anxious to take a big buck. Uh, before I get too far into that tip, though, uh, there's a few things you should know about whitetails. For example, they're 50% nocturnal. That means that half of what they do when they're not bedded is done at night uh, when we don't hunt. Uh, why is that important? Well, it means that when you go out to your stand site in the morning, if it's near a feeding area especially, the deer are already there. They've been there since 4 in the morning. Uh, and usually they're all done feeding by about 10 and then they head back to their bedding areas. That means that you've got quite a challenge ahead of you uh, getting to that feeding area without those deer knowing it. If they know it, you know, if they absolutely identify you as a human hunter, your odds of taking deer uh, that morning are not very good. Nor will it be very good after that because once whitetails realize that hunters are waiting in ambush around the favorite feeding area, they'll quit going there. They'll feed somewhere else. Well, there's ways you get around that. And um, one of the ways is get up at four in the morning. <laughs> we do that all the time in our camp. Anytime we have somebody new come to their camp, it drives them crazy. You're up at four in the morning, so why do you have to get up so early? You get lost out there in the dark. Well, we do it because it's really important, and here's why. Uh, because It's because the deer are already out there. Uh, we want to get up early enough. Uh, well, it's because, more important, it's because uh, over the years, in the last 40-some oh, years, we've discovered that at least 85% of the older bucks we take are taken during the first three hours of the day. Beginning at first light, or a half hour, before sunrise, and that, that's legal shooting time here in Minnesota, a half hour before sunrise. 50% um, of those bucks are taken during the first hour. So the first hour of the day is really the most important hour to hunt if you're going to be a buck hunter. Now, there's a problem with that. When it, no matter what you do to get out there, now we, we, we keep, our, especially within 100 yards of where we stand hunt, we keep our tra trails really clean. We pick up all the dead branches, toss them aside so you can walk out there without stepping on a lot of branches and having them snapping loudly underfoot. And then uh, we try to stick to really he heavy cover right up to the stand site so we aren't as easily noticed. And because deer can see as well at night as they can by day, uh, keeping it to cover on the way out to stand site is really important. And the other thing is to walk as softly and as quietly as you can going out there. Now, no matter what you do, whitetails are going to hear your footsteps. Uh, in fact, you know, they hear the footsteps of wolves trying to stalk them. The wolves are only successful at taking a deer they're stalking in about one out of five times. Unless they're fawns. They're pretty, they have a lot better success with fawns, of course. But at any rate, uh, you have to walk softly. And the other thing you have to do is walk steadily, non-stop. You don't stop as if you're hunting on the way to your stand site in the dark in the morning. Uh, you go right to the stand, non-stop, but walking softly on trails that are fairly clean. And we do that, we are able to do that because we mark our trails with fluorescent tacks which light up like Christmas trees in the dark at night and with a flashlight beam. So we don't lose our way going out there. But you move without stopping. Without, when you stop often, uh, they recognize you as a hunter. When, when uh, a wolf is stalking a deer, they stop often, they're sneaking. Those periods of silence between periods of, of, of uh, footsteps that they hear uh, is considered to be really dangerous by whitetails. This scary stuff. Uh, and if you're moving in their direction, they figure, gee, uh, we better get out of here. They'll probably move out of that feeding area before you arrive. But if you're moving steadily without stopping, despite the fact that you're walking softly, when they hear your footsteps, they can't be sure what you are. You might be another deer, you might be a moose, you might be a bear, you might be a human, you might be a fox, you might be a fisher <laughs> uh, or a mink. Uh, but they can't, if they're not sure what you are, they're not going to abandon the area. 
Then when you get to your stand, they're still there, but from the time they first start hearing you coming, they're going to be extra alert. They might continue feeding, but they're going to be, they're going to be raising their head often and, and listening and watching in the direction from which they heard the sounds. And, but until they know you're actually a human, they won't leave the area. So, and if you're walking steadily and you're a non-hunting human, that's even better. Sure, deer stop often when they're walking, but if they're walking steadily, uh, that's to them, uh, that sound is a lot different than the one that's stopping often. And if you're sneaking or walking softly and you stop often, that's a dangerous set of sounds to whitetails. So you walk non-stop to your stand site softly. They don't know what you are for sure when you do that. And when you get to your stand, you sit down, you're silent. But despite the fact that you're silent, they're going to continue to be alert and watching and listening for sounds and motions in that direction for at least a half hour before they settle down. They will settle down. If they don't hear or see anything during that half hour, then they're going to consider you to be whatever you were. You weren't dangerous. You're probably gone or you're bedded or whatever, but you're not dangerous. And so from after a half hour has passed, uh, they're likely to start moving in your direction. So. What we try to do, we get up at 4 in the morning, is make sure we get to our stand site 30 minutes before first light or one hour before sunrise. So that we're there at least 30 minutes before we can see deer or, or fire at a deer. We want to get that half hour of that they're really alert and staying away from the area where they last heard you out of the way. When, when, that, when it's first light, when we can finally see the deer, they're already at the point where they're not worried about you anymore and they're moving incautiously in any direction. And your odds of seeing deer close to your stand site after that 30 minutes is passed are, uh, go up tremendously. And so we don't want to miss a minute of that first hour, the best hour of the day to take a big buck. And up where we have, with all the wolves we have, those our bucks are usually on their way to their bedding areas already at sunrise. So, if you arrive there, if you arrive at your stand site at first light, uh, you've got that half hour to go through. You you already missed half of the most important hour of the day for taking older bucks. If you arrive there at at sunrise, you've lost that whole first hour. And up where we where we hunt, uh, that means our odds of taking bucks there are going to be practically zero. So we get up at early and we take all these precautions and that's why we're good buck hunters, we're successful buck hunters. Well, good luck to you guys this fall.